Welcome into another edition of the Dana Duckworth Show. I'm Maggie Hetzel alongside head coach Dana Duckworth. And coach, you guys headed to Florida this week, and I know it was a tough environment to go compete in, but an incredible score, second highest meet score of the season, 197.45 to Florida's 198.05. And you just said the ladies, the way they competed, they competed with so much grace as well. Well, I thought that when you look overall at the performance in general, we were consistent on the road in a very tough environment. And when I look back at for example, bars and beam, our leadoff and our anchor were the best they have been collectively over season. But the routines in between still have some tents that we left on the table. As far as vault and floor go, we were very aggressive, and I thought that we did an excellent job, again, getting that experience on the road in a very electric environment. And so when you look at the overall performance, the consistency was the key. The grace and beauty, of course, is continuing to get better and better. And so the focus now is details, details, details. <laughs> well, and we'll jump straight into bars, like you mentioned, a 49.35. Kylie Dixon, we'll look at her highlight first. First, she had a 9.875, and you said in post me, you were really proud of Kylie's bars routine. This was her best performance leading us off. You just see that her handstands were right on top of the bar. She's been working very diligently on just great feet and great leg extension on all that she does. You just see that beautiful handstand. I thought her positions were beautiful. I honestly thought that this was a gorgeous Takacha of a single bar release move. Feet are completely pointed. She gets the last handstand. So at this point, I have no deductions. Right here, she signs up for the dismount. I mean, the legs are together. Just that little arm circle and that little chest being down. I felt that that was one of her best routines. She has really taken her work from practice and put it into to performance. Makari Doggett, a 995 uneven bars champion, and she was fun to watch on this routine. Well, she's just so aggressive on this event that Takachev to the pack combination is so challenging. And you know, there was a little more pressure because we had had one mistake. So all the girls after our mistake were a little tight, but I thought that Shay were not showing and Makari basically landing so confidently. Look at that, that's an undeniable stuck landing. And Shay, you mentioned, we will not see her on the highlight, but she did have a 9.875 matching Kylie's score. Yes, and so ideally, you're continuing to get better. And so to the character of this team is to never give up, to never quit. And you just see that with all the detail work. And so I was excited that we started off very strong on bars. I think we went into the second rotation only a tenth behind, which was huge in not knowing what that environment was going to be like. And straight into vault of 49.325, Lexi Gravers, we'll see it, but oh my goodness, the smile on your face when she landed that. <laughs> Well, it's a funny because I call her like the little stinker when she nails a vault like this, but Luisa Blanco did a gorgeous Yurchenko full. Her body line is beautiful. She gets great amplitude. You just see the best stuck landing she's done in competition. I thought the distance was nice. Her body lines, look at how flat her hips are. Oh, it's just, that was gorgeous. Well-deserved. A 9.85 for Luisa. Yes, and really all of our vaults on Friday night were great. Now, Shallon, we're showing here, she had to really scoot this double full around. You see her get up and then that pike right at the end. Again, we gotta get that stuck, undeniable landing. If she could just basically finish that rotation a little more, she'll be able to land straight up and down. 985 for Shallon, and this one, Lexi Griver, 9975. Lexi's been really focusing on her technique right there. So see her face because she really is starting to know where she is in the vault. I thought that she had great height, great amplitude. The arms come out and the landing just nails it. She was vault champion and that was her career best with that 9975. It's just nice to see someone who has put the numbers in in practice basically really worked because it was a challenge of her at the beginning of season. One day we'd make it, one day we wouldn't. It was kind of inconsistent. And so to see her starting to really figure it out, that's part of the growth as an athlete. Under pressure, am I going to change it? Am I going to be able to handle the nerves? And now she's starting to get into a rhythm. So let's just keep doing that every week. <laughs> and through bars and vault, it was going to be a tight competition back and forth through the night. Where was your team's mindset at after those two rotations? I think they were just on fire because the way the momentum built on basically a great bar you know, performance and then a really strong vault performance. We really just wanted to go over the floor and we wanted to nail our landings and really sell the routines. We were starting off with Alonza Cloffer, which was different this year because we hadn't done that yet after Griffin had gotten hurt this, you know, recently. And so I thought that the ability for Luisa to step in when Makari Doggett couldn't go and Alonza to step in, we just continued to thrive. We're going to talk floor and beam, though, when we come back, so stay with us. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One.
Welcome back into the Dinner Duck Wars show presented by uh, Alabama One. Coach will jump straight into floor 49-425. Shay, Maddie, Lexi, we're going to get to watch a couple of those routines. But floor has been just a special spot for your team all year, and especially after the injury to Griffin James. Your team has come together on that event. It's such a fun event, first of all, for the girls because the whole team gets to interact. If you watch the girls on the sideline, they're interacting with the team, the, the athlete that's out there. But I think for the highlight of this week is that we were able to utilize our depth. We put Alonza Cloffer in there. We put Luisa Blanco in there, and they stepped in in situations. And so I think it just goes to show that we still have a lot more to be able to create the best floor lineup that we possibly can. As Makari Doggett was not utilized. But it is nice to have that depth. We'll look at Shay Mahoney, who's always been a blast to watch, a 9925 for Shay. She was beautiful on this event. Her landings, her controlness. Here she starts off with a double tuck. You just see that con total controlled landing. Her leap pass, a tergite half, and a popa. That was one of the best ones she's done. Legs were completely level. This middle pass, a front full, front layout, a combination pass. Just gorgeous the way she lands it, finishes it. You just see her sell this routine. And her last pass, the double pike. I thought this was a great finish. Controlled again, lands in that lunge. You see her just excited. And I just love to see her thrive. She really is competing the way she practices every day. She puts that kind of energy in every routine she does. Maddie Desh we won't see, but she had a 9875. We will jump to Lexi Graber, who had a 9925, and it's her sixth score of 99 or better this season after that last pass of Shays. Yes, and so it's fun to watch Lexi really sell this routine. She does a really nice double, it's basically a full in back out in the tuck position. You see here the full twist, the back, I thought that was really high. The chest lands completely up and down, not a lot of deduction there. Her leap pass is a little different. She does a switch side chasses into a wolf full and a half. So you either have to have CC combination or a D, and she does the D combination there. Right here, a front through to a double pike. Again, nice, tall, chest lands up tall. She finishes it, just really rocking. And I love seeing these ladies build confidence. They get a lot of confidence from each other watching them do the entire routine on the sidelines. Lexi's doing her routine and everyone else is dancing along to it. Absolutely. And then, of course, when you have that dynamic tumbling like that, Lexi continues to just impress me every single day. I just, you know, I, at one time we called her the firecracker. This year I call her Mighty Mouse. And I also call her a gamer because she loves to compete. And I love to see her get out there. She's been in an anchor position on multiple events. And she's a fighter. And she does that in practice as well. So it's nice to see them be able to just really uh, do their job every day and have fun together. We're gonna jump straight into Beam Coach, a 49.35 on Beam. We'll look at Alonza Klopfer's routine first, a 9.9, I know you were proud of this one. Oh, I thought, I've watched this routine about 10 different times. She just was moving with such confidence and it was so looked so simple and easy for her. Right here, she does a squat full turn, the leg is out and she just nails it, it's beautiful. Her series, a front aerial to a back handspring, giving her one-tenth bonus. And just see how calm, cool, and collective she is. Beat jump to a straddle half, that gives her two-tenths in bonus. She sets up for another bonus here, a cat leap to a side aerial. You just see it so graceful. But this was the highlight. She's worked really hard at sticking this landing. She has a round off one and a half, and just that was the best I think anyone could do it. So I personally probably give that routine a 995 or even close to a 10 because I didn't see much in there, but I was just so proud. Let off in that position, you can see her face, just means a lot. And you talk about your gamer, Lexi Graber, this week, incredible on beam, a 9925. It's just nice to see Lexi be able to really focus in on the details on balance beam. Right here, her series, something that she works on all the time. It's a really hard combination. A back handspring layout to two feet into a beat jump, right, drops down right to the beam. This right here, her switch leap to a straddle three quarter. That was a gorgeous three tenth leap pass. Very challenging to do. Cat leap to the Nastia, that goes right to a scale. You just see her fighting for every detail and she just lands that gainer full. And it was a great exclamation point to the end of our meet. I was incredibly proud with the way the ladies handled themselves. 
They just showed composure throughout the whole night. They continued to dress in pink and, and perform for pink. And I thought that was just a great job in general as a team, especially on the road in that hostile environment. And that score, 197.45. And four great rotations. What do you take away from that meet heading back home into this week? Well, I think the biggest thing is we have to continue to concentrate on the details. And that's going to come from discipline. But it's the discipline in all the small things. It's not only what you do in the gym, but it's your rest, your nutrition, your recovery right now. Because everyone has a little bit of mental fatigue, a little physical fatigue. And so what are you going to do personally to water your rose, to own your rose, to do it right so that you feel great each week? And that's what we're going to do heading into this season. Or in this week, excuse me. <laughs> well, coming up next, we're going to have head coach Dana Duckworth's tip of the week, so stay with us for that. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One. Welcome back into the Dana Duckworth Show presented by Alabama One. Maggie Hetzel alongside head coach Dana Duckworth. And it's coach's tip of the week. We're not in front of the video board this week because we've got a little bit different of a topic. We're talking about how to get recruited in NCAA gymnastics. And the landscape has really changed in recruiting in gymnastics. It used to be early recruiting and now it's been moved back a little bit to a little bit later of a recruiting process. I'm excited we're going to talk a little bit about this topic because a lot of people will ask me many times, how do you recruit an athlete? What is the standard? How does it work? And these days, you are starting after your sophomore year. It used to be we would recruit in eighth, seventh, eighth grade. And so I think the key here is that athletes have to look at what is my skill level? Am I doing well academically to be able to get into the school of choice that I'm looking at? And coaches are looking for, have you been able to compete over time? Have you been able to show that you can get through an entire season in club gymnastics? I tell the athletes, always be smart about your social media because life is a full-time interview. Everything matters. And of course, it's the responsibility of that student athlete that they have a strong fitness level, that they're working on basically being the most fit athlete they can so they can perform at their best. And how has the landscape changed? You know, social media, you talk about that. That is seen everywhere in your life. And it's seen a lot of your ladies who compete for you now People, you know, young girls look at their social media. So that's just important across the board. Oh, it's changed the landscape of not only recruiting, but it's also changed the ability for, you know, a prospect to get their routines and their name out there. So when you think about what are some of the tools that you can use as a, as a recruit, right? You've got the ability to have your own YouTube channel. I think that Instagram and Facebook and using those tools to put your videos out there, allowing a coach to see what are your strong events and how are you competing and what are your practice routines look like? Like being able to use the ability to email somebody and the consistency is, you know, finding those top 10 schools, maybe a student athlete is really interested in and then focusing in, do I have the skill level to make it at that university? Do I have the grades to get into that university? And do I have the ability to make an impact at that university? And so at Alabama, you know, we really do focus on, are you going to be able to be this type of student athlete that can compete at the level that we want to compete at to be able to basically be on the floor the final night of the national championship? the opportunity to win. And so I think it's important to look at what are the resources you have as a recruit, making sure you're using those resources. And I go back to not only is consistency over time important when you are competing. So we're seeing somebody can handle 15 weeks in a row when you're a collegiate gymnast, right? But it's also consistency in time when you're being recruited. So am I emailing that coach once a month, checking in? Is there anything else I can do? Am I sending in my transcripts? Am I doing the things that I need to do to be recruited? Because at the end of the day, you want every student athlete to find the right place for them and to have the wonderful experience. Because you aren't only going there, it is student athletes. You want an incredible experience in college. But you also have to own your role and own your responsibility that if I am recruited and I am at a university, I have to own my part and do my job. And so I think it's such a beautiful opportunity to look at the recruiting process and who you're becoming in that and then who you're going to become when you're at that university. And I always tell people, go to a university that if your sport was taken from you for any reason, you still loved the idea of graduating from that university. And if you do that, then you can't go wrong. And your gymnasts here that you've recruited are incredible academically and on the floor. We're going to talk about one of those gymnasts coming up, Alonza Klopfer. And just to tease a little bit, exotic animals, a vet. We'll get more into that, don't worry, when we come back. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One.
It's so different when you're out there on the floor and somebody goes for a floor routine. Like, I don't even notice myself, like, jumping so high. Like, I just go and it just happens. And, like, Lexi just points out to me, she shows me, like, a picture. And I'm, like, up in the air, like, super high. And she's like, what are you doing? Like, I didn't even notice you doing this. I was like, I didn't either. Like, it just happens. I don't know. It's just such a love for the people on the floor and just wanting them to be successful. It just, it jumps out. I built a lot of relationships just through memories and just being in the gym and grinding really hard and it's been something I'll never forget. Round off, one and a half twist, holds on to that landing. Overall that was a very nice beam routine. I've done like a lot of embarrassing things sometimes and we always find humor in it and Lexi will always be there to remind me of those funny moments. We've been living together since freshman year, since the summer I was first here. And I think we started to get really close when we moved off campus together. And that was good just because we've like gone through a lot of adult things that we just built memories on. And that's how we got closer. I've always loved animals, just since I was younger, just like outside, I just sit there and just watch things happen and just observe. And I just find it so interesting. Since I was younger, I wanted to be a marine biologist and, or just like a general vet. But then as I got older, I just found a lot of interest in like large exotic animals. That's my dream goal is like to work with them someday. So I've been able to have that opportunity here and get everything that I need for the requirements for vet school when I move on to graduate school. I'm a strong student and I strive for big goals. And I have a career goal in mind outside of gymnastics, and I strive for that every day. It's so neat each week to learn <laughs> new things about these ladies, but a large, large exotic animals and being a vet to that, that's something you wouldn't expect, and it's really neat that she's able to get that education here to go on to vet school. Well, I say that she can do anything she wants to do. She is one of the hardest workers, not only in the gym, but she studies all the time. She takes it very seriously. She is a planner, and the thing about really, Alonza has always wanted to be a veterinarian. Even when we were in the recruiting process, she knew she wanted to do that. But I'm gonna tell you, one of the most beautiful souls of a young woman. She is absolutely one of the hardest workers in our gym. She is probably one of the most coachable athletes. She actually is very self-critical, so she'll like really look into, how can I do this better? And oh, this is what I felt. And what do you think, coach? And I just love the fact that, you know, she has been in a position many times where she's been that seventh, eighth person Person. She's just ready to be ready, and she owns that role so beautifully. And she'll say to me, whatever you need, whatever you need me to do, you need me to step in, I'll step in. You need me ready? And I just love to know that that is going to transfer into the next chapter of her life. I love seeing that we show Lexi and Alonza as the best of friends because they really have grown. They have been there for each other. And I think that they've had a lot of life experiences together. When they went to Thailand last summer, you should have seen her pictures with the elephant. I mean, it wasn't just because she's at Alabama. <laughs> she just loves the elephants. <laughs> One day at practice, she walks in, she's like, guys, we got to save the turtles. I'm like, what? She's like, no more plastic straws. I mean, <laughs> she is just, she's funny, she's quirky, and she's beautiful. And so it's, I love to see her featured here. I love that she is doing some of the best gymnastics of her college career right now, and the future is so bright. Well, coming up next, Coach, we're talking uh, you guys back at home against Kentucky. Stay with us. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One. Love seeing this shot of Coleman Coliseum. We have two more opportunities to have home meets, of course, this Friday and then next Saturday. We're excited to bring your friends. It is a friends theme. It is the Bama salute. And in beautiful Coleman Coliseum, you have the opportunity to see some awesome gymnastics. And you will be going up against Kentucky. So what are you taking away from Florida into the meet with Kentucky? And what is uh, what are you telling your ladies? Well, there's nothing better than competing in Coleman Coliseum. And so I know that our entire team is excited to take all the hard work and all the lessons we've learned up to this point into Coleman Coliseum on Friday night against Kentucky. We're going to stay in that Bama bubble. We're going to continue to focus on the details. And we're going to let nothing steal our joy. So it's going to be about uh, giving it's really the best performance they possibly can do at this 
this point and using all the hard work they've done this week and the discipline and the details. And quickly to add, you guys are ranked ninth. It is the first week of the national qualifying scores ranking system, the NQS. So as we're, get, we're really getting into that meat of the season. And for us, it's about performance. I don't look at the rankings. I know the rankings are going to determine where we go for the regional championship. And I think it's well and good. But I will tell you that right now, why we've had success is that we're focusing on the detail work. Where is my, you know, where's my look? Where's my hands? Where are my landings? Where are my handstands? That's what's going to take us there. So we're really guarding against trying to look at the big picture and results and outcomes. It's about who am I becoming as a person and who am I becoming as the best version of myself as a gymnast. And if we stay in that bubble, then we're going to continue to do great things. Let's look at some of those best landings and handstands in our hype video for this week to get you guys ready for Kentucky. Thanks again for tuning in to another edition of the Dana Duckworth Show. We'll see you next week. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.